This week we begin a new series called The Way of Salvation as we explore John Wesley's unique take on theology and the life of grace that we live. This week we're talking about the first of these three graces that John Wesley lays out, and we're talking about prevenient grace. Prevenient grace, admittedly, it's a word that sounds strange to us. Now, to help us out, it's easy if you look at the first three letters of this uh, word, uh, prevenient, P-R-E-V-E-N-I-E-N-T, prevenient. But the first three letters, uh, it is a, a, a suffix on this uh, word, pre, uh, which we all know in a lot of words, pre meaning beforehand. If you think of prevenient grace as just pre-grace, uh, it becomes obvious what this kind of grace is. It is grace that we are all given before we become aware of it. Sometimes Wesley and, and other uh, Methodist theologians uh, label this as uh, preventing grace. Uh, now this is uh, more in the sense of, of what we understand of as preventative, right? You know, you, you take uh, preventative medicine uh, beforehand. So uh, this is uh, grace that is preventative for us, uh, um, kind of as, as other faith traditions understand prevenient grace. They might call it common grace. This is, uh, you know, when we say phrases like, well, you know, by God's grace, I was able to, to make it through that. Well, that's the same kind of idea of preventing or preventative prevenient grace. It goes uh, ahead of us to keep us uh, safe uh, to the point where we can uh, understand and accept that grace on our own. Uh, it is this grace that comes before we come to faith. As with any understanding of grace, we should remember that we don't do anything to receive that grace. It's been available for all because of God's will from the very beginning. God tells Jeremiah in the first uh, few uh, verses of, of Jeremiah, when God calls Jeremiah, he tells him, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. And before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you as my prophet to the nations. So God is giving this idea of this prevenient grace that goes before us. Even before we're even born on this planet, there is prevenient grace in our lives. God, in this week's passage, as he's speaking to Jeremiah uh, and telling him about uh, his plans, um, God gives uh, the image uh, to Jeremiah of the potter at the potter's wheel. God reminds Jeremiah that as the potter has power over the clay, so God has sovereign authority over the nations. Right? So just kind of reminding us, uh, that we are just pieces of clay to be molded by the potter's hand. Now, this molding, this shaping that God is doing as, as the potter at the potter's wheel, it, it's not done irresponsibly or arbitrarily. God doesn't do anything irresponsibly or arbitrarily. Uh, what he does is uh, in line uh, and consistent with all of his uh, uh, nature uh, that we see throughout the Bible. God's nature is, of course, holy, just, wise, and loving. God can do whatever he wants, but what he is more than likely to do is going to align to the characteristics of being holy, just, wise, and loving. God also doesn't need any advice from us, right? The the clay can't tell the potter what to uh, make out of it. And we too, much as we may want to, much as we may try, God ultimately doesn't need our advice. He knows what he's doing. Um, we also don't really have the right to, to criticize what he does, even though, again, sometimes we're more than tempted. God asks the question to Jeremiah, for who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor? And the truth is, none of us. God is above our ways, and his ways are not ours. And so because we are not God, we don't know why God is shaping our lives the way that he is. But we know that he is working through prevenient grace. Prevenient grace, I think, is best understood um, as an act of courtship 
by God for us. You know, many times theologians will use the word when talking about this prevenient grace that goes before us and draws us in. Uh, they use the word woo. Now, this is this is woo, not who like a, an owl might uh, say, and, and not the guy that plays first base, but woo, W-O-O. Now, anybody who's married or engaged or even just dating, you know that you don't just automatically decide that you're together. Men are used to, and they should be, uh, to having to woo and court the women before the relationship is made official, right? Uh, and in uh, modern times, there, there's even uh, added stages of the talking stage. But men are used to having to woo and court and, and pursue and draw in those women that they are interested in before that relationship is official. In doing this, men are trying to prove their love, their desire, and their plans that they have with the woman that they are interested in. Similarly, God behaves this way, arguably in a more amazing and perfect way. God wants us to know his love, his desire, and his plans for us the same. Provenient grace, and indeed all of grace, is an act of love. The Bible bears this out in the first epistle from the so-called love disciple, the one that we know as John. John in his first, first epistle says, this is real love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. We love each other because God loved us first. This is the truth of God. He shares with us a divine love that comes straight from his heart. It's this same love that is a seeking love that searches for us all the time. It's an everlasting love that will never diminish. And indeed, as love being extended through grace, it is a gift that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is all the good news, all of the gospel. It maintains Wesley's understanding of God's working in salvation based on Reformed teaching. Of course, what Wesley was familiar with in his uh, uh, teaching uh, in the Anglican Church from the Protestant Reformation, this Reformed thought, is that God is sovereign acting in our salvation. But for many, we hear that, and it causes some discomfort because we like having free will. Next week, we'll talk about how that free will that we have is joined with the provenient grace and becomes uh, another grace uh, that we receive uh, that brings us to, to faith uh, and being part of uh, God's plans uh, as he has drawn us uh, into that. So look forward uh, to next week in justifying grace as we uh, understand how we join our free will to the grace that God has already extended to us. Amen.